You don't think there's somebody worse than Trump gonna come along one day and do the same thing times two and we don't do something about it? I mean, I know it's hard to fathom that it could be somebody worse than Trump. But before there was Trump, you couldn't believe there would be a Trump. It's the Trump impeachment. Trump impeachment for $300, Johnson. House Democrats will proceed with impeachment. The single article of impeachment they have introduced says, quote, Donald John Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting violence against the government of the United States. He also willfully made statements that in context encouraged and foreseeably resulted in lawless action at the Capitol. We could be seeing a vote on that here in the coming days. Bring it right to the floor and um, it will be um uh, considered by the full House, and I expect that he will be impeached. He will be the, the first president in history to be, be impeached twice. We need to make it clear that there is a consequence to what happened on Wednesday. Uh, for those who, are, uh, who say we should look the other way or we should move on, to do that basically says that what they did was okay. Now, as for President Trump, there has been silence. He doesn't have Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, but he does have a briefing room in his house, the White House, and we could hear from him today. Democrats, meanwhile, are also pushing for accountability for members of Congress, and that could involve the 14th Amendment, which calls for the removal of any member of Congress who, quote, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Now that goes on and on and on and on. It looks like there may be a vote as early as Wednesday. What they did was try to get a unanimous decree, and they're also trying to push Mike Pence to actually do the 25th Amendment, which is to remove Trump from office as unfit. That doesn't look like it's going to happen, Johnson. Now, I, I, look, maybe maybe Mike Pence decided he might want to work somewhere else one day. Maybe he decided uh, Donald Trump got a lot of votes, and he don't want to piss off all those vote all those voters. He just saw what happened at the Capitol. He's like, I don't want those people showing up at my house. Uh, I don't have that big a porch. So maybe that's what's going on with Mike Pence. I really don't know, but I can tell you this. There's a lot of mixed reactions to the possible Trump impeachment. Because it looks like we've been down this road before. Here we go again. One thing's for certain, though, and two things for sure. Well, actually, I'm not even certain of it. But he will be leaving office, it appears. Even, even if they have to pry the, the key to the White House out of his dead, cold hand. And I mean that rhetorically, theoretically, not, not, not for real. Um, people say that they never made it anyway, Johnson. The people, you don't have to pry it from my dead, cold hands. And as soon as they be like, hey, give me that. And they be like, oh, here you go. Because nobody wants to... You know, no, I don't think when you die, your muscles stay contracted anyway like that. It's a dumb thing that people say. So Donald Trump, he's going to have to leave anyway, Johnson, because regardless of what you think, you know, you know, um, you know, about the impeachment, whatever happens with that. Now, there's, there's something about this that, you know, I heard people saying, I want to make sure if you're not, if you haven't been on these social media sites, which I don't recommend because they have been extremely toxic for a brother. Lately, anyway. Um, some people are saying that, you know, they can get two votes on impeachment. We can't get one vote on Medicare for All. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. All you Johnsons out there, I feel the same way. I wish we could get a vote on a vote on Medicare for All. But I also wish we could have a, get a vote on H.R. 40, even though it's, an in, in, uh, it's definitely not an infallible vote. Bill, it's definitely definitely needs work, but it's been around for about forty years. No one's voted on that. I know. Divisive, right? Uh, here's the thing, guys. There's a lot of shit we should get done that doesn't get done. My question to the community is, how do we get it done? I mean, look, man, we all had the same problems. We have a Congress that's ineffective. It doesn't get done what we need to get done. I thought the inside-outside game would help it, but here we are. So now you can see when they want to get stuff done that they want to get done, they can get that done. They can go right to the, they can go right and say, hey, time to vote to get rid of Trump. Twice. Twice. 
Look at this, this will be the second time. And they had no problem whizzing that sucker right on through. But if we say, hey, how about we look at a study to just examine, just to look at, Hey, what about Jim Crow? What about convict leasing? What about redlining? What about discrimination all these years? And how it's impacted black people? And then the people are like, well, we, we can't vote on that because people are opposed to it. And I'm like, well, the study is to examine it, not to do it. We can't even get a vote to examine it. Medicare for all, same deal. I mean, we've already examined it. It's laid out. And actually, the same the same representative that wrote the the HR forty wrote the Medicare for All bill. I think there's new iterations of it though. There's a different one in the House and the Senate. But the point is, they were both written both decades, at least twenty years plus, right? I think uh, HR forty was eighty three. Medicare for All two thousand three, something like that. Don't quote me, but there is a gap, and they're, they're both several years, and if you're a millennial, we've been looking at Medicare. People have been talking about Medicare for all since, like, the 1900s, or universal health care, since, like, the 1900s in this country. It's not a new concept. The thing is, how do we get it done? So, anyway, back to this thing with Donald Trump. They want to impeach Donald Trump. I don't much care if they impeach him. I do understand. I do understand the need to uh, make sure presidents know they can't rile up their base to the point of overthrowing the government or whatever the hell they were trying to do, which no one has really clearly explained what they were trying to do. Hey, dog, all I'm going to tell you is if you go to somebody's house and you break in there, you broke the law. I don't know what you call that. Now, if you're outside the house and you're protesting, you're yelling at the top of your lungs, that's one thing. But once you break in the house, what do you call that? And when you got a president that was like, let's go there, let's, you know, let's, you know, let's fight. Let's head on down to the Capitol. Let's go. And that's horrible. I don't know. I, I, I'm just tired of these people supporting Trump. Their soft support of Trump is horrific. I mean, what did you, what's the punishment for doing that shit? You don't think there's somebody worse than Trump going to come along one day and do the same thing times two and we don't do something about it? I mean, I know it's hard to phantom that it could be somebody worse than Trump. But before there was Trump, you couldn't believe there would be a Trump. So all I'm saying is, like, I get why they want to impeach him. I have no problems with that. I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. Call me what you want to call me. Now I'm the new David Pakman because I don't care if you impeach Donald Trump. I'm not saying I would do it myself, but I'm saying who gives a shit? This guy's horrible. If my consent decrees alone, he needs to go. What's wrong with people? Anyway, so that's what they're talking about impeaching Donald Trump. And those are the basis of the impeachment. The basis of impeachment are the fact he led or he helped lead, he incited an insurrection. Now, people are getting, people are getting kind of hung up on that title, what that means. And, and to that, I just say, guys, if it's not an insurrection, what the hell were they doing in there? And I'm going to show you some footage later that really caused the question, like, this wasn't exactly demonstrated. No. Um, not when you're running room to room looking for people. That's not a demonstration. What that's called us. That's called a jack. All right. So uh, what else we got? What else we got on that? We got uh, the impeachment. What else on the impeachment, guys? I just want to comment or take note of the fact that Donald Trump still got more than seventy-one million people to vote for him. So can we actually look at this election and say that? You know, Biden's victory is a repudiation of Donald Trump's racism, his ineptitude and his disastrous policies of the last four years. I don't think that it was a repudiation at all. Fifty eight percent of white male citizens voted for neo-fascist gangster. Fifty three percent of white female citizens voted for neo-fascist gangster. You had thirty eight percent of Latinos voted for him. 28% of queers voted for Trump. 29% of Jews voted for Trump. 
no grounds for celebration when you have that kind of support. If it were not for the black vote, fascists would have won. If black people disappeared today, fascism would reign. Not just in the Middle East. Not just imperial tentacles in, in, in Latin America and other places, but right at home. And even black leadership still tied to a neoliberal hegemony. But they voted against the neo-fascist gangster. Yeah, Johnson. So Dr. W Dr. Cornell West, and I think I'm going to start doing a segment called uh, Cornell's Wisdom because everything he drops is hot. But here's the thing. Cornell West put it very per plainly. He said, uh, the, all these people voted for Donald Trump. All these people voted for him. So we got a problem, Johnson. That problem is not going to be solved by more ne neoliberal neoliberalism, and I don't think it'll be solved by impeaching Donald Trump either. Some people say, what can it be solved by? Education, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe if we uh maybe if we actually did something to help the people. I mean, I put out a tweet and I put it like this. Unless the Democrats get this shit together and decide to actually do things for people that actually impact their lives in a favorable way, more than just virtual signal, you can look for a possible another another Trump in twenty twenty four. And it may not be the same body, it might not actually be Donald Trump. But we're talking Trump 2.0, which can only get worse. Maybe this time it'll be actually efficient. And that's what we're looking at, guys. That's where we're at. So as they stoke the fire and say we need to pitch Donald Trump, once again, I'm not against it. But I'm more for creating policy that matters and impacts our lives for the better. Because if we do that... We won't have to worry about getting rid of Trump in his last eight days to try to send a message. We would have uh, abetted, hopefully, and diverted the possibility or minimized the possibility of another Trump coming on the horizon just a couple of years away from now. Besides, I'd like a president need to turn if it was up to me. So... So we got that going on. Um. So anyway, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you up to date. Um, I'm sure it'll be everywhere if they do succeed in impeaching Donald Trump. Um, he ain't got to go home, but he got to get the hell out of D.C. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't be fooled by corporate media talking heads misleading the people. Get your news and information from an entity that keeps it real. Tim Black. Tim Black is the host of The Tim Black Show, independent news that leaves you informed, inspired, and sometimes entertained, but always in the know. Go to TimBlackTV.com and sign up today. The Tim Black Show is news for people who can't stand the news. See you there.